Welcome back. It's episode 70. That is so many episodes that we made 10 years ago of the original show and that I have made of this show. The very convenient thing about there being 100 episodes is that that means I'm exactly 70% of the way through, other than the Q&As, which I do on my Patreon. And if you have enjoyed all 70 of these episodes, maybe you would enjoy longer versions of them, bonus content, or just supporting me on my Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Ashley Clements. That's me. My name is Ashley Clements, and this is the Look Back Diary. something new today. We are continuing with this stretch, obviously, but something that I noticed on this rewatch that I don't know that I really clocked before is, you know, I've mentioned we're back at home, we're back with the familiar Bennett sisters, the characters who we encounter in Lizzie's room, and we've got to catch up with the sisters. It's a really nice little sister run, and it's not just Yes, we have to catch up with them, but there's a real sense of change. There's a real sense of things cannot stay the same. And that is a particular kind of stress and can be very fear inducing for people. We certainly see that with Lizzie in this episode, but I think it's interesting when you consider it to be a kind of unconscious undercurrent of this section for Lizzie, certainly for Lydia as well, that almost unconscious awareness that the way things are right now cannot stay the same and the grasping at wanting it to stay the same and also the push towards needing it to change. It's a real coming of age dynamic that makes a lot of sense for someone who is where Lizzie is. She's 24, She's in grad school. She's almost finished with grad school. She lives at home. The conversation in this episode kind of implies that she's always lived at home, that she also went to undergrad nearby and never left, which is something that a lot of millennials can relate to. It's a real stressor for her, and we'll, we'll see that here. So let's take a look at this episode that I've already analyzed for us. Hi, everyone. Hi Lizzie. The pocket extension is on beta. When did you do that's, that's a frightening amount of turkey because like I grew up in a family of four and I don't feel like we had turkey last into December. You'd have to freeze it or it would become a food safety issue even, but she made six turkeys. I don't know. <laughs> Oh no, Jane, don't leave us. We love you. Kind of if I don't have the time to be here. I'm on my second independent study. Oh, how fancy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was debate here about whether or not I should do a good British accent or a bad one. We obviously went with bad because Lizzie is not an actor and because it's funnier. Always go for the funny choice. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, lonely. Oh, and in walks a very adorable, look how cute this dress is. Sweater, tunic, maybe? Just so cute. I think I remember that she borrowed some clothes for this shoot day that like, I think if you put them all together, you can kind of tell that they like come from the same designer or stylist or something, but they're so cute. That probably was her pin, it's definitely her headband. And she's just very good at putting it all together. It's funny. She's like, I'm not a fashion person. I'm like, look at you. Ooh, so mature. Ooh, that's extremely correct. Very good point. Oh. Hmm. A little jump cut. Apparently we did not get through that without needing to do one. Uh-huh. And... It's also been, at this point, like, how many months since, you know, they were together for, like, what, a month or two? And now it's been at least twice that since she saw him. It's kind of, you know, 
healthy to move on. Oh, we're like pretending that people have friends. <laughs> I'm sure she has friends. We just like never see or hear about any of these characters, but she's into her career. And this is our little like feminist take here, right? Because it's still a romance. They're still going to end up together, but she's like, I don't need a man because she doesn't obvi, but it's also, you know, the source material is where she's gonna, she's still gonna get him. Oh, uncomfortable questions. We don't care for this. <laughs> but also, isn't this like the first time Jane's ever left home? Hasn't she also just been living on her own for the first time ever? Uh, because that was a terrible job. Stand by that decision. She would have been extremely miserable doing that. That is, and it's not weird to want to finish her degree. That is, okay, fine. Like, start harping on little things here. <laughs> well, sure, she's scared, but also, like, that was a bad job. She wouldn't have been happy with that job. But it's very normal to be scared about what you do after school. I mean, she's also still doing school, although sort of not anymore, right? Because we've like made up her independent study stuff. Yeah, okay, that's that's not a thing. I mean, it's very much a thing. People's Christmas villages that the trains go through are elaborate, but that's not a reason. But where, where do you expect her to go? She does, She's finishing school. But obviously we also need to sort of push her towards saying yes to Pemberley. <gasps> oh, oh no, oh god, she can't even say the name of the cookie. Oh. That's gonna be all the comments. <laughs> I predict this. Oh, and it's a cute little sister hug. Uh, I've been pushed, and I will think about it because we need to get her to Pemberley. So, as I was saying about the sister dynamic, episode 69, we've got Lydia pushing Jane a bit, kind of saying like, hey, I don't think we should have those people who hurt you in our lives. Here, we've got Jane pushing Lizzie, Saying like, hey, you know, you're going to have to do something with your life. You're not going to live at home forever. And neither of those cause fights. And I'm just thinking ahead to what we know is coming in just a few episodes where the big fight between Lizzie and Lydia occurs in which Lizzie is like, hey, I'm also prodding you. Now, when we get there, we'll see why that was done differently and with, you know, less sensitivity. But we're establishing, actually, in a really smart way that I didn't track at the time, that we've got this setup where, like, the Bennett sisters push each other a little bit. They encourage each other to step out of their comfort zones or move away from things that may be holding them back in some ways. And it makes sense that Lizzie thinks that's like normal Bennett sister thing to do. She just doesn't know how to do it as well. And I love that we, you know, set up that Jane is doing fine without Bing. Obviously, she still has some feelings about the breakup because of the snick cinnamon sugar cookies thing that, of course, the fans absolutely clung to. But also, she's doing great. And her doing great makes her want her sisters to be doing great, too. Let's check in with those comments and see how right I am. Kelly Martinez, even after two and a half years, Jane's reluctance to say snickerdoodles still makes me cry. 
that word and peach are like daggers after this series. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries ruining words since 2012. Alanissa says, Old Jane will be back at Christmas time with Snick. Cinnamon sugar cookies. This physically hurt me. I know. I know. I know. Uh, Rebecca says, let's take a moment to appreciate Mr. Bennett's only line in the entire series. That's not true. That's not, that's false. I don't know what to say about that. Caroline Bandiera says, I'm rewatching this and I can relate so deeply with Lizzie, afraid of growing up. That's me. I bet a lot of people related to that. I would have related to that very much around the time that I was finishing school. It's normal. It's totally normal. And that's why it's a universal feeling. Susie also, she can't even say the word snickerdoodle. I know everything turned out fine, but damn it, Darcy, why? Uh-uh, no, Susie. We are listening to Jane, and we are putting blame where it belongs. Yes, Darcy tried to convince Bing of something, but Bing is an adult human who made his own choices. He chose who to listen to and not to speak directly to Jane about it, right? Because all of this could have been avoided with a direct conversation between those two cuties, huh? Sure, Darcy played a role, but uh, Bing still is responsible for his own decisions. And he has not reached out or responded to Jane for months. That's crappy. No, I'm actually just pulling out the snickerdoodle comments because it's just so funny to me now. Haha, -ha. I laugh at your tears. Queen Bee says, rewatching for the second time now when Jane corrects herself on the cookies, it literally breaks my heart. Will it always be this way? Um, no, and also you don't mean literally. <laughs> Queen Bee has deceased and we're sorry about that, but who could have predicted that this would literally cause her heart to break? Inez Buides says when Jane hesitated and corrected herself upon saying snickerdoodles, I felt the pain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lots of comments about her being beautiful, also extremely accurate. And more about being related to Lizzie, about being scared about what comes next. Yeah, just a, a you know, very relatable episode in that way for lots of people. But it feels like a very young women in their 20s figuring out what comes next thing and i think that that would speak to probably the majority of our viewers either then or now that you've grown up you sweet little babies what are you gonna do have you thought about it do you have a plan